Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we are celebrating the return of Master of None with one of my favorites, Carbonara, a recipe that begins and ends with eggs. We're going to start by measuring seven ounces each of all-purpose flour and semolina flour. You can just use all-purpose if you want, but semolina gives the pasta a nice color and texture. Next up, we're going to break four eggs into the center of a well that we create in the middle of our flour mixture. Then we're going to beat those eggs with a fork slowly, adding more and more of the flour mixture as we go along until we get a rough dough that we're going to turn out onto a clean work surface and enthusiastically knead for about five minutes or until we get a nice cohesive, smooth, supple dough. Wrap in plastic wrap and let rest at room temperature for 30 minutes before busting out your fancy new pasta extruder. Placing golf ball sized pieces of dough one at a time into the hopper. Now if you don't have one of these things, an easy and less expensive way to make spaghetti is with a pasta roller, but you can also do it by hand rolling out a sheet of dough and cutting it into strips. But sadly, that's another episode, maybe when I do Master of None Season 2. Once we've got all of our pasta made and dusted liberally with flour, it's time to mince up about five or six cloves of garlic, because we're doing two batches of carbonara here, one meat and one vegetarian. It looked like Dev was using guanciale, which is the super OG way of making carbonara. It's a cured pork gel. If you can't find that, just use pancetta or even bacon if you like. Fry that up until it's nice and crisp, and in the last few minutes of cooking, set a few nests of pasta in some boiling water for two minutes and add two to three cloves of minced garlic to our sizzling meat. Saute for no more than one minute, kill the heat, and add the pasta. Toss your pasta to nicely coat it in jowl grease, which is a new favorite phrase of mine, before beating together two eggs and stirring constantly, adding to the pasta until creamy and evenly coated. And then while the pasta is still hot, we're going to dump a whole cup of freshly grated Parmesan into the fray. Don't use any cream. There is no cream in real carbonara. Season with pepper and add salt if necessary. Guanciale is usually pretty salty, so you might not need it. And using our favorite carving fork. I swear, I use this only for pasta. I've never carved anything with this fork. Plate your noodles with some extra meat on top, and of course, a healthy grating of Parmesan cheese. Now, at first I thought the pasta press was a waste of money, but it produces really dense, chewy noodles, which I love. But what if you want carbonara without the meat? Well, we need to use some meaty, smoky, umami flavors. Let's start with a few sliced shiitake mushrooms that we're going to saute until crisp in a few tablespoons of olive oil. These are our pancetta proxy, our swine substitute, our pretend pig, I got a million of them. Add garlic in the last few minutes of cooking, just as before. Sauteing until fragrant, adding the pasta with a bit of pasta water. You want to make sure to add a little bit of pasta water with both of these versions. It helps thicken the sauce in the end. We're still adding eggs and cheese because Dev specified this is a vegetarian version, not a vegan version. I have no idea how you do a vegan version. But to try and stand in for the smokiness of the bacon, we're going to this time use a half cup each of smoked provolone and Parmesan. Plate it up all fancy, extra mushrooms on top, and the requisite freshly grated Parmesan. Now, a really great carbonara is something very special, so is a vegetarian version up to the task? Well, to give you an idea of how good this was, I still clean my plate despite this being my second bowl of carbonara in the span of one hour. It also ended up costing me a lot of money because I went out and got a gym membership afterwards. I wish I was kidding, I'm not. 